get one of these shirts right now. Um, and all you had to do was look around the room and get it. Who's going to see the opportunity to get it? Who's going to get that opportunity? So we have a shirt. All you have to do is get the shirt. <coughs> yeah. All you have to do is get the shirt. We have opportunity. It's around the room. You just get the shirt. It's about opportunity. It's about opportunity. The shirt, because it was all around the room. Oh, oh. Get a shirt, get a shirt, get a oh. shirt. So we had shirts all, we had shirts in the back, we had shirts in the front. It's all about opportunity. So the people that seized the opportunity, they got a shirt. Everybody who sat back and watched, maybe knew what was going on, you didn't get a shirt. So that's kind of how opportunity works in entrepreneurship. Um, it's, it's about seizing opportunity or seizing um, points in the market that don't have um, or that need need. Um, that is restaurants, uh, we, do, we have a hair store. So all of the base um, just has to believe in what you do and you can go to um, the next business and the next business. So like I said, we saw a need um, in the college in the college spectrum. We wanted to start throwing parties. Uh, we started throwing parties and we started throwing the, um, some of the biggest parties in Texas. Um, I think us and him are the only ones um, that we were having a rivalry at the time, and uh, we were kind of going back and forth at like who had the biggest party. We won. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, I don't, I don't know if that's true, but we have to stand. <laughs> but no. Uh, but so yeah. So as as uh, as we went, like I said, um, we started throwing some of the biggest parties in the outside of school. Um, then we started using that base to do other things like open up a hair store um, and now doing the festival. So that's kind of what got us started. There's no one place for us to go to as African Americans when we think about moonwalks. We all just Google it and we order it from anybody. So I created a business called Happy Kids, etc. Went to the training, started ordering the products, and then once I started to get the name trademark, because I had the social media, I had the, the dot com, I, I got the name trademark and they stopped me because there were other names that were uh, associated with my brand. So that's what name check will keep you from having that headache and going through what I would invest in. I have people ask me to invest all the time, you know, in whatever I'm doing. So, you know, you just got to build your brand, build a name for yourself. No different from an artist, you know, it's, hey, build a buzz, then you get a major deal. So that's the same thing. It's like build a buzz for yourself, create some noise, you know, network, you know, know the right people, put yourself in the right position. Um, you know, life is all about politics. I've been in great positions, you know, not because I'm the best person to get the job done, just because, you know, hey, my relationship is with him and he's the guy who's making the decision, so I get the deal, you know, so you want to make sure that you're also connected to the right people who are making the right decisions so you can make sure you get the right deals on whatever you're trying to do as well. One thing, just have at least have, you're, you're around seven people, eight people, you have something going on, those people should have it going on as well. Like I seen Sauce Walker go from just, you know, mediocre, but he had everybody screaming sauce. So he had at least 10 people saying sauce this, sauce that, changing their names to sauce this, sauce that. And that created a live buzz for him. I seen Tisa Korea, if you don't know, you go check out Tisa Korea. You guys ain't have no money, but they just signed an Atlantic deal with about a week, two weeks ago. Just no money. Ago. They were just asking me, how do I, how do we make money out of this? And I just told them a few things. They ran with it. Six months later, they had a deal. 150K. This man ain't got no money. I'm a crackhead. He lived in some of the worst conditions you can think of. But it's positivity and the fact that they did create a group. And everybody just repped the same thing. So they created this dance called The Woke. Which you see little Uzi Vert sure and all these, I can't do it. Um, when I jumped into this hair industry, the only difference that, the only thing that made me different from everybody else that was already in the industry is that I was educated. I had a business degree, I got a global mindset, so I was able to pass up everybody that's already currently in the industry because they're not doing all the new things that I've learned along the way. So I think that uh, being educated is like the key uh, continually 
continuous education. You like you can't jump into an industry or graduate and think that you're gonna get that job or jump into that, that industry and you ain't gotta read another book. I learn something new every day because I know that there's other people coming behind me trying to take my spot. So if you know that you at the top, continue opening up a book because somebody trying to take it, I promise you. Uh, so definitely be educated, know your industry and become an expert at it. I'm bald headed. I can tell you everything about here. <laughs> yes, man. I mean, a lot of things just, you know, when you're about to make a wrong decision or you're thinking about making a bad decision, somebody who can, you know, say, hey, that's not what you need to make. And just make sure you surround yourself around good people. You know, um, the things you're talking about, like, what are you talking about on a day-to-day -day basis? You know, what kind of conversations are you having with your friends? Are y'all talking about, you know, being better, taking your life to the next level? Or are y'all just talking about chitter-chatter all day? Y'all just talking about, you know, whatever. You know, I want to make sure, you know, when I when I wake up and I'm talking to my friends, we're, we're talking about taking our lives to the next level, about being great. You know, how, how can I go from here? To hear what can I do? Hey, this organization is doing this, you know. And I just study great teams, you know, great organization. You look at LeBron and what he has. I mean, his team is trying to prepare on how they're going to be billionaires. You know, he wants to surpass Jordan, so they have a game plan on what they're going to do to make sure that you know that they're, they're able to get there. So they're acquiring, you know, all kind of media services and stuff like that. Anything that they can do on that level to make sure that they, you know, achieve the success that they're trying to achieve. So, just um, we're like complete opposites. We know each other since we were children, but we're like complete opposites. I'm pretty quiet and reserved to myself. He's pretty outgoing, but our strengths play out for each other. Um, we're building a company. Um, some things that I'm not good at, he's not good at. But at the same time, I understand that he has the terms of I am. But the main thing I'm saying is that determination will get you to where you want to go at the end of the day. Set a goal, um, set some steps to reach that goal, and make sure that you hit every step on the way or you're probably not going to reach that goal. And I'm talking about, and real sacrifice, like, I'm talking about every day looking at the things that you're doing and cutting out some of those things and actually going into and working with your business um, or what you want to do, your idea. A lot of people, um, most people probably in here have seen all the power. They've seen all the basketball games. They went to some of the basketball games. Some of that stuff has to cut out. Um, we don't, like with us, we don't party uh, too much. Like on the weekend and stuff like that, we don't do that um, because we're working on our business. So we take those hours away that we wouldn't be working with our business and we work on our business during those times. So like, like huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. I need y'all to still come to my club. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Most definitely. Most definitely. I need y'all to do a little bit of party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Ask for a job. When I went to school for the last thing I went to school for, which was business, and I started creating jobs, um, it taught me how important education is. I didn't get rich until I graduated from college with my four-year degree. I didn't get rich until I graduated from college with my four-year degree. And I'm saying that because I'm sure none of these guys would be where they're at if they hadn't made this stepping stone through college. Uh, because it works. So I just want to share that with y'all because I know a lot of people always pulling with themselves, trying to figure out if this is the, the correct route. But trust the process. Look at the process. Understand that it works. So don't give up. And if you do end up not graduating, use your connections that, you, that you've that made in college. Uh, all these people in here, they all want to obviously do something with their life. They already took the step, like he said, to come to college. So everybody has an idea that you want to be greater in life. It's just you don't might not know exactly where you want to go. So I always say you want to network with as many people as possible because you never know who is who and what they're going to be doing in the future. Um, if I could talk to some of my classmates from back in the day, I would because we used to act, not act like, but we used to be the party throwers. So we didn't talk to everybody. The person who's studying all the time, we didn't always talk to them. And now that I'm older, I wish that I would have because some of those people are CPAs and they could have helped me right now. They can uh, help me build my business and help me um, in their line of work with what I got going on. So like I said, don't shun anybody to the side or like think that, oh, this person is just a studier. That person maybe in uh, in a couple of years is gonna be the top C, uh, CPA in the, you know, in Houston or the top lawyer. You may need a lawyer. So definitely use um, everybody like that you come in contact with, try to talk with them. Um, there when they get there, why wouldn't they support you? Customer service. <coughs> show, show. So I'm like myself. 
my business model is black economics. Like I was raised like a socially conscious house, and um, it's like it only makes sense. Like you said, if you go around your neighborhood, I was I was raised in third world as well, and all the stores and the restaurant restaurants and stuff like that, nobody looked like me, and all they're doing is filling voids. So it's all business about filling voids. The biggest voids in the black community because we weren't taught to start businesses, we weren't taught to go to school. So you see, like you said, you see. Um, Koreans own, own hair salons and hair stores. You see all different races aside from black people starting race, starting companies inside our community. So my advice to y'all is to start businesses for black people and direct and target black people because nobody really does that for us. It's more so like people are people more so, um, what's the word? Not used, but I guess used to a sense. It's more so like I see what y'all. I see what you guys got going on. I see the struggle that y'all are y'all put through. I'm gonna take advantage of that, and we have to take that back and do it for ourselves, like he's saying. And, uh, you know. and appreciate you for some odd reason. I see brands like Philippine and these guys. They 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 go straight to the rich the kids. And these guys pump their brand. I guarantee they don't know one rich the kids song. Don't nothing about them, but they understand this guy is popular. He's popping, so we're gonna put them in the club because they understand that these black people see this. Cause we buy everything. We buy all the Gucci, all the Louis, we buy everything. Chanel, you can't even, you only have a Chanel house. That's what I was told. <laughs> but you I was have, told. you have, uh, your, your closet costs more than what you have in the bank, your mortgage, you don't even have life insurance. You know what I mean? But you have all these things because you feel like it adds value to who you are as a person. You're only buying it because, of, because you feel like it's valuable. So with that value, it adds value to who you are because you don't think you're worth anything because you weren't taught to, taught to be worth anything. So spending money with your people, everybody up here, turkey leg hood, I'm gonna eat turkeys all day. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm, I, I, hey, I, I, don't, I don't, look, my girls are going to wear cheese happy hair. You know what I mean? All day. Because they own it. I don't care if I don't like what, I don't have to like it to support it. If it's black, then I'm with it. And that's how the other other races and groups think. They don't like Trump, but they're going to support him just because he's Trump. He's white. So they feel like he's for them. And what we do is, just like if we were doing this a, a community, right, a new community, we get some money. What black people do? Ah, I need to go live around the white people. Man, my girl is a real estate agent. She says every Indian uh, Arabian guy that comes in there, when they buy a crib, you know what they do? They say, look. Give us a good price on this because we're going to bring back our uncle, cousin, brother, sister, and they're going to buy houses too. They want they want the community to be Indian. When we get money, we want the community to be everything but black. And I learned a lot a lot about that from him. So I used to be about, I'm not stopping. I'm just learning more and more because with business and growing, especially how things are these days, everything is fast. Like you guys are quick. It's just. I've never seen so many young people so much money in my life. But the fact that things are so fast, it's just, you know, things are rising at a, at a real high pace. So whenever you think of failure, don't ever think of failure as a, as a loss if you feel like you're not winning at that particular time. Because one day, like, I designed something a year ago, it didn't do well, today it's, it's booming. I sell out quick, because I kept going. That same design, I mean, I remade it just to see if I was tripping or not. So I remade the same, same design from a year ago and uh, made it today two different outcomes. But I kept going because I believe in failure. I believe in the best The best learning experience is a loss to me. I lost in the flood. I lost uh, my new shop. I lost over 60000 I lost uh, everything, basically. But I didn't quit. Talked to my guy right here, Tay. He was like, bro, it's a trip, bro. Keep going. So with that, with Harvey, I was like, OK, cool. Two weeks after that, I just got back in it. Next thing you know, now I'm, I'm good friends with Fabulous, Jeezy, Days Low, whoever you can name. I'm pretty much in the loop with these guys because I kept going. I didn't look at that uh, loss as a failure. I just looked at it as a blessing. Uh, we were booming in Oklahoma City. We had a great location, prime spot. And what they did was they started stealing, uh, started not firing, I mean, following the hiring processes. Basically, they started telling Ronald McDonald how much salt to put on the fries. So with me being a franchisor, I'm trying to keep things in order. But because I'm just Mr. Bowers, they only know me as Mr. Bowers. They don't really know I'm about that life. So the disrespect comes 
at a different way than it would come if they actually knew your history. So when that happens, just know that you can't respond uh, the way that you used to if you want to continue being successful. Because I didn't respond to them the way that I used to, uh, I'm still a millionaire, I'm still balling out, and we moving into Atlanta here shortly. So keep that in mind. If I done went back and got my way back and put those guys in the headlocks, and to, to really put you guys in, per, in perspective of why I wanted to put them in the headlock, understand that when you go into business, you want to put the address, the lease, in the company's name. You don't want to put the lease of the location that you're in, if you're the owner, in somebody's name. And so that's what we did. We ended up putting that lease, that location, in that individual's name instead of in the company name. So when things hit the fan, I had to leave. And so when I had to leave, the thousands of dollars that we put into marketing that address to bring the city to that address were all his now. And so all I can do is walk away like, all right, bro. So keep that in mind. Just learn from my mistakes. Put the business in the company, or at least in the company name, especially if you're the owner. For sure. Make sure you get you a real good attorney. Like, off top. You know, don't ever go into business just thinking that it's going to be all good and handshakes and it's just a clear understanding on, you know, what it should be. Make sure that you have all your legal documents and all your paperwork and, and on point. Um, it, it, it might cost um, money on the front end to, to spend it, you know, whenever you speak with attorney, like, you know, five thousand, ten thousand dollars to drop these documents and you're like, I don't want to spend that on some paper, you know, but when it, when it comes back around, you know, it's going to be like, man, I wish I would have spent that money just to make sure that everything was intact and everything was on point with the business did. And so while we're talking about doing things the right way, um, and so for me, I do the things that I'm good at globally across the world. I just got back from South Africa. I'll be in China uh, October 22nd uh, for about two weeks because I'm going over there to, to change my life even more. Uh, so just know that anything you do in one city, you can do in another. And I think that's a huge competitive advantage for me because I'm not scared to go to the other Martin Luther King boulevards in the other cities. So keep that in mind. Um, my advantage is just having a great team. You know, I think that's the biggest thing I always speak on, just, you know, who's influencing you and the people you're talking to on a day-to-day -day basis. But I think that's the biggest um, thing for me is just having a great team and make sure that all my moves are thought out and everything is strategic and it's a strategy behind everything that I do. So, you know, just making sure that, you know, uh, like I said, you don't know, have a whole bunch of dummies around, you know, you're not just talking to, you know, silly things all day long that you're actually talking to other people that has the same goals like you and that, you know, they're trying to get somewhere. But you're talking to such and such all day and they just talking about, you know, whatever, then, you know, where does that put you? So, so that's a great way to, oh, you want to answer? I was going to tell them to advantage by, as long as you're not thinking right now, anything like that, I understand I want to last the next 100 years. Right. Not 20 or 30, but the next 100 years. If you look at Louis Vuitton, you see how long they last, you feel shock that they've been around since the 1800s. So with that mindset, you have to understand that, hey, I'm just saying for me, my advantage, so when I produce, I don't even put a price tag on anything that I produce. You don't even know the cost of it. And that's another advantage because it gives the person who's trying to compete with me, they don't know what I, what I charge so they can't compete with it. But I'm thinking for the future, so I'm thinking 100 years from now. So I'm producing things for 100 years from now. That's just my advantage. So yeah, that's a, uh, come be a part of our team and be a part of something we're doing just based off a conversation and what I may think that you're good at, or an interview at, at least. Um, like I said, find, you wanna find those people that are good at what they do. So um, how, we, how we try to do things is one, either interview style or networking style. Um, we network with a lot of people, we get a lot of their traits based off what we're talking about, and then we see if they're good in certain positions. Um, a lot of the time, we also don't have money to uh, pay people for these positions in our business early on. So again, that goes back to the trade and barter system. What can you give somebody from your business to get them and help them help them to work on your business with you? So think about those things as you're starting, as you're creating that idea. Build out those positions you need. You need this person to be over inventory. You need this person to manage this thing. Know that so that as you're going and passing, you can see people with these traits. Maybe you might go into a McDonald's and see a great manager. He might want to leave McDonald's. You can bring them to your company and and have them work in your system. 
if you you know if they fit and then also um you want to be quick to fire as well this is one thing that i have a problem with um i have a real problem with quick to fire because a lot of people um i believe in people and uh i understand that some people make mistakes but it's got to be an accountability issue it got to be something where at a certain point we have to cut it off and a lot of times we hire like our friends or we hire somebody that we know and we give them a lot of chances because they're our friends. They don't want to hurt their feelings. And I do that as well. So what I've learned to do and what I've started to do is cut that down. Get Put actual real um, measurements and requirements for what I need you to do in my job. And if you're not doing that, then we have to get you out and we have to go. And it's not a friend thing, it's just a business thing. So again, build out your positions first. That's what you want to do after you get your concept going and figure out who you're going to target and what you're going to do build out those positions of what you need to fill because these are there's people along the way that you can fill those positions easily and then also know what your trading barter is that's a big thing in business trading barter and we all use that um some way or another uh rich, rich, dad, rich dad poor dad what is it about um rich dad poor dad is more less um, uh, different mindsets, you know, um, a mindset from um, a rich dad and then a mindset from a poor dad and just how they think differently. Um, just, a, just a mindset thing on, on just two different levels of, you know, how you view life and your perspective on it and how you view it, um, pretty much. Uh, me personally, Speak I would, up a little bit. Up. me personally, I would uh, advise you guys to uh, read Read whoever you're selling to. Me, I would focus, that's what I focus on. So I focus on the people that I'm selling to. So that's what I read. So you can't get the time to read, read, read who you're trying to sell the product or whatever you're trying to sell to. Focus on that. You know, understand that consumer because you know, these days, what is that? Um, how, how, did, how is it now that ring that they have around everything? But you were talking about from uh, New York. Oh, uh, the geo filter. Right. Yeah. So with that. Um, explain that to them real quick. So the geofilter is like you can basically put a ring, I bring like a parameter around the school and right. target people that are just on the campus. So let's say I'm selling a, a TSU t-shirt or a TSU hoodie, I can put a parameter around TSU and target everybody's cell phones that is on campus. They have been on campus in the last 48 hours once I set up the parameter. So how you guys are it? It's called geotag, but what I'm talking about is like a geofence. So we set up the, the geofence. So let's say you got an iPhone. All right, say your location is on. In the so that's how the geo filters work. As you come to the geo filters, with your location being on, the geo, the geo tag system catches, catches your phone and says, this person goes to TSU. This person in the area of TSU. They're a potential customer. And that's what it's to be. Right, so if you sell to TSU, then you would, have a, you would have a whole market for that right in the palm of your hand. When you read to that consumer, you understand what they want to provide the service. So that's what I do daily on social media. I post things, I post a lot of radical things. So it might be, you might think I'm bipolar, but I'm actually just seeing what people are attracted to. So if I post something about Louis Vuitton, I understand a lot of people gonna run to it. If I post something about, you know, uh, this uh, these hurricanes just wiped out Florida yesterday, nobody's gonna really pay attention to it because that's not what they're into. So I just see what people are into and I read into that. Um, for me, I love reading, right? So, but I don't have a lot of time. So instead of just reading all the time, I, I listen to a lot of audio books. And so y'all in school right now, right now this is a form of education. Uh, you can take the time out to read a lot of things and if you don't have time while you're stuck in traffic, cut off Lil Wayne album and press play to one of these audio books that's gonna change your life. So I go to school every day that I'm on 610 or I-10, whatever, so keep that in mind. Uh, one of the best books that I've read um, was written by, um, the guy that started Tom's, he started Tom's. I don't even know his name, but it's called Start Something That Matters. And so what Tom's is stems from is a guy that went overseas to South America and he, he found some shoes. And so he wanted to put a name on it, a logo, a brand, and then he put a social responsibility behind it. Which means that instead of him feeling like, or you guys feeling like every time I buy a, a, a pair of Tom's, whoever the Tom guy is gets all the money, he's returning or buying or sending a pair of shoes to some poor kid in South America. And so because everybody understands why he created that brand, it works for him. 
And so the book is called Start Something That Matters. And if you understand that, the first time I went overseas, I listened to that book on the way back from Brazil. And so She's Happy Hair is something that matters. We matter to the community. And I know that that book played a lot of, uh, a lot of reasons and why you know, the brand is, is doing what it's doing. Uh, the second book is The Alchemist. Anybody ever heard of The Alchemist? Changed my life. Changed my life. Now that book is, is kind of, it's kind of fantasy, you know, it's kind of this and that. So you got to really read it to really grab the understanding of it. And so what I learned from that book is that you can never stay in one place to get it. And that book, that, that person, the, the main character, traveled the world and just kept seeking new opportunities. And so in order to get those opportunities, you got to be there. If you ain't there, you ain't going to get those opportunities. There's a reason why um, I have my hands on a lot of global brands. It's because I'm in India. When everybody else was partying for Memorial Day weekend, I was in India having million dollar conversations. So which one would you rather do? Right now, I'm gonna be doing everything I can do right now because this is what matters. These, these four years or five or six years, whatever, three years you got going on, I would be going crazy right now with designs. I would be the coldest designer. So what I'm trying to do right now, you can do right now, because you have the you have the you have the availability and the time to actually think. We don't really have time to think, yet we do think. But it, but but the team the team effort is what helps us think all amongst all amongst one another. But you guys can actually sit there, go to school, see what's going on. You know the future because you are the future. Remember that you know the future because you are the future. You always win. That's why I always go back to the youth. Everything that my brand is is just to you. That's how that's how you will win and outlive everyone. Right down the, 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 the business plan. I can see it. I'm like, man, okay, I can do this, I can do that, and then the money's coming here. And then I can reinvest it there. So if you have an idea and when you're speaking that idea, whoever you're speaking it to, if they can visualize it, then that's the one. If you speaking to somebody and they like, nah, man, I ain't with it, man, I'm gonna get it. Like, how are we supposed to eat? Then I don't think you should start with that one. But um, let the industry tell you what you should start with. Find that hole. Find that problem that needs to be solved. Uh, the hair industry was wide open for a lot of reasons. Um, reality TV was brand new. All the women want to be what they see on TV. They want to see. They want to be what they see on Instagram. You know, uh, it's not been that long ago where women wasn't running around with she's happy bunnies. Uh, so, you know, keep that in mind. Just know that... You can find these different industries and fill these holes up. But if you can visualize it and you can make other people believe in it, then that, that might be the one. I would say provide what people need to live or provide what's a lack of. You know, we just bottles of water up here. The water's free here. We still go buy bottles of water. So this is something that we need. And I do. I provide something that's a lack of. I know there's not too many high end designers in Houston, Texas. So or it's not anywhere you can go and just find great clothing that nobody has on, so I provide this service. So the business, if you have a business plan, you're looking at these five proposals that you made, all it, is, all it takes is you understanding what needs, what you need to provide or what isn't, uh, isn't available. So um, I'll just say just go with what you're most passionate about, you know, whatever you believe in the most. and. You know, no, you know, no matter what, you're gonna rock with it. Um, whether it's making money or not making money, you're still gonna roll with it. I would, I would go with that. Uh, also, one, one other thing is, um, in business, what I've learned because it's a lot of industries that I attempt to jump into. Uh, the hair industry it brings in a, a certain demographic of customers. It's some industries that you can market to the world. So understand that when you jump into business. Some businesses that you jump into, you can only market your product or service to a certain people or person. Some businesses, you can just put a yard sign up and everybody can see it and everybody got a chance to spend money there. So understand your customer and understand that when you are choosing your industry, some industries you can't market to everybody, but if you want all the money, then jump into an industry where you can't market to everybody. At the end of the day, it's about if you have the money to do, it, to do what you're trying to do, or if you have the partnership has the money to do what you're trying to do. Or you gotta kind of just scale back and start on something else. We came to college, I wanted to start a bunch of companies. I had no money, so we threw parties until we saved up money to throw other parties. 
before we graduated college, we started a food truck was one of our initial goals as freshmen. We, we threw so many parties that we saved enough money to buy a food truck at the time, like $35,000. But as a freshman, we had zero dollars. So this is about what you can actually afford to get into or what your partners can afford for you to get into. Uh, so here's a big idea becoming spam or in just building awareness. Um, paid advertisement. You know, we throw festivals and we get ads. I've got a current festival in Dallas coming up on the 22nd. The ad that we're running currently has 7 million views. That means 7 million people saw our ad in the Dallas area that said, come to this event, it's going to be going down. Um, <coughs> we're a team of brand ambassadors. In Dallas, we have 100 people right now as we're doing this uh, session online saying, come to anything, come to anything, come to anything. LEM is tight, LEM is tight, LEM is tight. So you got to just, you know, get those kind of things going. Um, I think don't waste your finger strength. A lot of times we, we use these, these mobile phones uh, not to the best of our ability. So we sit there, we scroll, or then we decide to post, and then when we post, we post the hashtags that look good to us instead of the hashtags that the people want. So when you search in hashtags, you can type search, and whatever hashtag you got in mind, it's going to show you the amount of people that's ever typed in that hashtag. If I don't have a million or a couple thousand or a lot of people other than just myself posting that hashtag, I'm not going to waste my finger strength to put it underneath, uh, to put it on my caption, if that makes sense. So understand that the words happy, love, it's simple words that millions of people are clicking on every day. And that's just another way to, to you know, electronically get your brand out there uh, without wasting finger strength. So with the... Uh so with that, like saying that, so we all have different strategies on this. That's why I wanted to talk about it. Um, with our strategy, we like to create our our, so, um, our handles and our hashtags. So we don't like for it to be a million people on our hashtag. We want it to be a clean, pretty clean, like you said, maybe a thousand or two, and something that we're, we can create it. We use it so much that when people click it, they then see our content. So. Just find a balance in between that. Like definitely use some that's already being used and then also create some unique ones that only you'll be using. So then when people post your uh, your content or post your stuff, they'll use the uh, hashtag that you created and they'll go under your creation. And then also um, piggyback on that, when you build up that hashtag, that's part of your reach. That's part of what you can reach out to. So when you're building these decks on the back end and building um, you know, proposals, you'll be able to use that reach from that actual hashtag saying, hey, I've I've created a hashtag that has 5,000 impressions, 50,000 impressions, whatever. That's part of your leverage for whatever company or whatever person that you're trying to partner with. So that's, I just wanted to give the contrast on um, the different strategies okay, on that. that. What was the question again? Oh, um, Low cost, low cost strategies on uh, social media and wait, how do you mass promote without it becoming spam um, while raising awareness? Um, low cost for me is um, I have about 250 employees. The majority of them are in college. They need to go to TSU, Prairie View, or U of A. So I just utilize my staff um, and, and let them promote. So everybody who's on my team is on social media and we just utilize, um, we utilize that. <laughs> our marketing tool. So we really don't spend a lot of money on marketing per se. We just utilize what we already have and utilize um, people's platforms. Also one thing you can do, like when new technology comes in, you can't throw out the old stuff. So like when we're throwing parties together, us and Junior and Murph, we're out there passing out flyers hand in hand, maybe twenty thousand flyers per month. Maybe more. Since social media social media social media and technology advanced, people think that flyers are like now another boy when they're not. So we, when we went to CSU, we might every step we take see a different flyer on the ground. As I walk around the campus now, I see zero flyers. So we also still throw events on CSU's campus just through some students. So we give our we give our promoters flyers and say, hey, go out to the campus and introduce the campus to the flyers now because in the past four years at TSU, there haven't been you know the usage of those flyers and posters and things like that. And it's things that are very effective. Like I said, M and I and Murph and Junior as well. We built, we built careers and lifestyle off of party promotions and flyers, which is low costing, a low costing uh, industry. Um, so I would say just look into the past and look at the things that worked in the past and know that just because it's new stuff, 
that they don't they no longer affect me. It's called guerrilla marketing. Basically, just stamping your stamp. Even if you get stickers done, whatever case may be, you stamping your brands from place to place. I had a brand called Rich K House. The first brand we was called Rich Rich K House. We got stickers, tiles, anything that was small, you know, that we can kind of spread out and just give it away. Even though we have we didn't have our shirts produced yet, we just had things that were cost efficient we could afford at that time. We was giving it out, just making the brand pop. Our first uh, the first thing we sold was hats because it was cheaper than a t-shirt at that point in time. A lot of uh, companies was trying to charge us five dollars a print, five dollars a t-shirt before we had our LLC and knew about a certain uh, uh, companies that we can get a t-shirt for eight three cents or seventeen cents. So what we did was we just, we just went where we went because we, we understood these guys had flyers and things of that nature. So we used the party promotion tactics to sell our brand first. Um, 